Okay, so my name is Sarai, and I'm doing this video for my English 102 class since I wrote an essay about um, playing video games and how they've impacted the education system. So this is an educational game I'm playing right now called Re Relive. Relive, I believe. And it's about CPR. Wonderful. Okay. So here's my hologram right here. Let me click on him. Okay. And ooh, here's this little robot to teach me. Basic life support and defibrillation. I am not competent with CPR, but I'm gonna do the skilled one anyway. Okay. Make sure everyone's safe. Make sure he's up. Okay. But that's if he responds. What if he doesn't respond? He doesn't seem like he's responding. I'm cool. I'm cool. Don't you worry. Okay, feel for a breathing. It's a breathing. I hear nothing. I don't hear anything. Yeah, I still don't hear anything. No, he's not breathing. He's not breathing. He's also a hologram, so... I mean... Help! I would shout 911 in here, but this is my dorm room. But come on, someone help! You! Go get 911! He's just standing there. No help at all. People these days. I didn't even know what that was before. That's the shocky thing. CPR. Okay, I've heard about that. Two times. Two. Okay. Awesome. I've also heard that, like, doing this can really hurt someone. So listening for breath and this is only part of the game there's another part of the game where you're actually in a high pressure situation okay got an AD. removing clothing gotcha like right in the heart and over here okay I'm gonna press it that was anti-climax <laughs> okay I thought that was gonna be a bigger shock he didn't even See, now I can save lives. Thanks, I've got it. Thank you, robot. So, basically, I just went through a simulation of CPR and imagine having this in the classroom and have every kid on a computer learning how to do CPR all at the same time. It's efficient and it really puts them into an environment that can best help them with learning how to use CPR. I don't know what else to say besides that. I mean, of course, I'm not using an actual dummy, but, you know, it's better than not knowing the steps at all. So, the next game I'm going to be playing is Human Resource Machine. So, let's get to that. Alright. So, this game I'm playing is called Human Resource Machine, and it has this type of coding already set in there as in different functions of what you can do. So the inbox, you grab something from the inbox, outbox, you put it to the outbox. Copying, you can copy something from a certain area. So these are all functions that can easily be related to something like C++ or Java, which I have coded in. So this gives you a problem and you have to come up with a solution with the functions that it gives you and it has to be something that can work for every single set of numbers here. So this asks you for each two things in the inbox, first subtract the first from the second and put the result in the outbox and then subtract the second from the first and put the result in the outbox and then you repeat until you don't have any more numbers left. So I've already made this code actually just so we can speed things up. So I'll show you the first one, four minus eight Wait, no, it did 8 minus 4 first. 8 minus 4 is 4, then 4 minus 8 is negative 4. And it's going to do that for all the other numbers. You see how it's going th through the code and then looping through? Look at this. 
achievement. The reason I kept playing this game is because I felt like I was actually achieving stuff. I did it in the optimal amount of steps for the solution. So this is a very satisfying game, yet you barely realize that you're actually doing some really complicated stuff that can easily be related to coding. It's a very good game and I recommend for anyone to play it. I have not finished yet. It's very hard. I promise you it's very hard, but I love it because I personally love complexity. I just want to show off something that I've done personally that relates to my actual major. Minecraft. Okay, so I decided I'm not going to talk about Minecraft just because the recording was messing up. I'm only using my laptop, so it keeps freezing. But anyway, I was just going to show you that in a Minecraft modification, as in an extension of the game, which is completely free, you can just download these after you buy the game for Minecraft, you can actually make a whole reactor. Yes, I made a whole reactor that can give off power so you can power a bunch of different machines in the game and you can start building such something like a computer. It's essentially a computer because it's a storage device and you can store thousands and thousands of items based on how many hard drives you have. And hard drives, obviously a real thing, obviously a real thing. So I think it's really important that kids need to start playing video games for educational reasoning. I mean, 90% of teenagers are already playing video games in America, and I'm sure many more in other countries. My essay was just trying to say that video games are going to be a part of the classroom in the future, and they really are becoming a part of the, an important part of the classroom right now. So this is... This is just showing some video games that I personally enjoy and can really bring some educational value to the school system. So I'm going to leave it at that. Um, if you want to check out the games, I'll leave a link below. I guess that's it. Thanks for watching my video. Go play some games and learn a little while you play them. Bye!